Good evening and welcome to Caution Week, day five, and today is Good Friday. And so thank you for joining us. Uh, please let us know that you're watching, uh, like, like on our video. We're glad you're here. So let's get started and dig right in. We're going to be in Luke chapter 23 tonight, verses 32 to 49. So let me begin. Luke chapter 23, verse 32. Two other criminals who were also led away to be executed with him. But when they arrived at the place that is called the skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on the right, one on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, because they do not know what they're doing. And they divided his clothes and cast lots. The people stood watching, and even the leaders kept scoffing. He saved others, let him save himself, if this is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked them. They came offering him sour wine and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. An inscription was above him. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals hanging there began to yell insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other answered, rebuking him. Don't you even fear God since you are undergoing the same punishment? We are punished justly because we're getting back what we deserve for the things we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three, because the sun's light failed. The curtain of the sanctuary was split down the middle. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. Saying this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what happened, he began to glorify God, saying, This man really was righteous. All the crowds that had gathered for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, went home, striking their chest. But all who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood in the distance, watching these things. So today we're talking about Jesus. He's, he's been going to the cross, going to the cross tonight. He's on the cross. He's finally there. So today... Jesus gets what the hostile crowd's been calling for all this time, crucifixion. Today, Barabbas is free, and Jesus is crucified. There is no Good Friday without the cross. You just can't do it. You can't separate the two. And so the cross is a, is a center point. It's the subject of our, of our faith here. But the cross is also something that many people feel like it's too bloody, can't talk about it. Um, this it's it's crude, but I'm going to tell you the brutal death of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Is, it, even though it's a subject many people don't want to deal with, because it's so painful to think about. But we can't ignore our faith and ignore the cross. We cannot simply just I want everything else in my faith without the cross. The cross is so significant, and so. We, we, so as we talk about the cross, Jesus died on the cross, an innocent man for the sins of many. And so I want to look at some several truths as we talk about the significance of the cross. And so I want to ask you a series of questions as we discuss the cross. First of all, what did the cross mean to the Father? What did the cross mean to the Father, God the Father? Well, first of all, the cross meant great sorrow cross meant great sorrow. He had to watch his son be shamed, humiliated, tortured, beat, and crucified naked on a tree. Watching men, his creation, inflict pain upon his son had to create great sorrow. The Bible is very clear. God grieves and feels pain like we do because the word God says that there's nothing we go through that he hasn't experienced. And so we know God was grieving after having, this, having to stand by and watch what Jesus went through. So the cross meant great sorrow to the Father, but the cross also meant great love. The cross meant great love because you see in this passage, he, he, the Father watched silently as the Prince of Peace was nailed to the cross. What well, after he had he'd already been beaten and mocked and shamed. And the sins of all mankind were placed upon him. 
And so he watched his son do what he came to earth to do. This was Jesus' purpose. He came to die. He did miracles. He, he raised people from the dead. He fed a lot of people, turned water into wine, did a lot of things. But he came with the primary purpose to die for the sins of mankind. You see, Jesus did this because of how much he loves us. You see, what did the cross mean to the Father? It meant and it showed great love. He loves us with a love we can't even imagine. We can't even fathom the depth of that love that he has for us. And, and so because we know that when Jesus went to the cross, him, because him and the Father are one, Jesus said so himself, you know that how much Jesus loves us and how much the Father loves us. The Father just, he, the only reason Jesus was here was because of his love for us. Not just great sorrow, not just great love, but also it meant that from a, for a brief time, in a brief instance, the cross meant that God would not look upon his son. He wouldn't look upon his son. You might be thinking, well, he's not looking on because of, I mean, how much he'd been beaten. I mean, the Bible says he was beaten so bad he was unrecognizable. Isaiah prophesied this. You wouldn't recognize him. And so, it, but it wasn't all because of this. The truth of the matter is, is that the father couldn't look on him because he had the sins of all mankind placed on him. You see, the father can't look on sin. He can't look on sin. He, he, he just, he can't do it. And so he, he had all of the sin, past, present, and future on his son. That's why the sky turned on. Is he, he just couldn't look at him. It was just too dark. So was there pain? Yeah. Watching him, watching Jesus go through this? Yeah. Very painful. But he simply could not look at this enormous amount of sin that was placed upon his son. This is just something he, he, he couldn't do. Okay, The father can't look upon sin. You see, and you stop to think about, what about what were the angels doing? You know, they were standing ready. They were just ready to just... Any moment, you know, we'll come. We're going to get them. We're going to get them off that cross. But they were standing by, silent, ready for the order. And the order never came. And you know that they loved him as well. They were just standing by, silent. You, see, you, 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 you can bet this was hard for the Father to watch. You can bet this was hard for the angels to watch. But I got a second question for you. Here's the second question for you. What did the cross, what did the cross mean for Jesus? What did the cross, what's the significance of the cross for Jesus? Well, first of all, and I think this is primary, it meant that his mission was complete. His mission was complete. What he came to do was now here. He came to die for the sins of mankind. He was now on a cross about to do just that. This is why he exclaimed from the cross, we see this in another gospel, he exclaimed, he says, it is finished. And so I think, well, what was he talking about? It is finished. It's finished because his mission has been accomplished. His task is complete. The job is done. Mission accomplished. You see, that's why he came. He came to die. And so the cross meant that, you know what? His mission was done, complete, finished. But also meant that the enemy was defeated. You see, the cross meant that the enemy was defeated. So the enemy probably thought he had won. You know, he sees the Son of God up there on the cross. And he's been beaten up and tore up and, and he's crucified, nailed to a cross. The enemy probably thought, you know, he got him right where he wants him. He didn't understand that cross was always a part of the plan. All the way from back from Genesis 3.15. This is part of the plan. The cross was always the plan. Jesus dying for the sins of mankind was always, always, always the plan. The enemy, the enemy probably didn't understand that. But here's the thing. Satan was defeated at the cross. Satan was defeated at the cross because, because one thing that separates us from the Father is sin. 
and across. Rejoin us. You see, somebody had to pay for that sin. Somebody had to do it, and it had to take to be a perfect sacrifice. It couldn't be just any old person. It had to be a perfect, sinless sacrifice. And that's what it meant with the cross meant that Jesus it meant that a door of salvation had finally been opened to mankind. Through his death, one can now have fellowship, can be restored. People can once again have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And so what was marred and destroyed in the Garden of Eden when sin came in and separated the fellowship? Jesus on the cross, when he when, when he died for our sins, he restored the ability to once again have fellowship with the Father. You see, the cross meant to, to, to the cross meant to Jesus that he can once again have that that that, that door of fellowship reopened. We call that salvation. The cross meant victory for Jesus. He won the battle. The cross might have looked bad at the day, on the time, at the time. Jesus won the victory. Jesus won the victory by defeating sin and by defeating Satan. Third question. What does the cross mean for us? What does the cross mean for us, God's people? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. What does the cross, it, first of all, as I just said, it means a restored relationship with our Creator. What was lost in the Garden of Eden has now been found in the cross. It's interesting that it was a tree. It was at a tree where Adam and Eve sinned through that tree of guard, that tree of knowledge of good and evil. But it was also at a tree where we once again had our fellowship restored. You see, what does the cross mean for us? We get to have restoration with the Father. You see, sin had messed that up. And for us, we get to have a restored relationship. It's 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 a beautiful picture. It, it's 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 we've what was broken was now is now repaired. The cross also means freedom. Yeah, freedom. Because the sin that keeps us out of heaven has been paid for. You see, no one goes to heaven with sin. Sin's not allowed in heaven. So if you're going to go to heaven, the sin can't go. Well, guess what? The sin, we're, we're born with it. And so because we're born with it, it's always with us. So there's here's the, here's the dilemma. Well, when we die, we got our sin. Well, we're going to we think either die in our own sins and pay the penalty of sin ourselves in, a, in, a, in the eternal separation from God in a place called hell, or we could take the Oh, yeah, that's right. Door number two. What Jesus did on the cross. We can take that door. You see, it means freedom because now we've been freed from that power of sin. The shackles that sin put on us were broken by Christ himself. It's a beautiful picture. Jesus canceled the sin debt at the cross. Think about that for a moment. The magnitude. He canceled your sin debt and mine. At the cross, we don't have to pay for our own sin anymore. Jesus, literally, according to that old hymn, Jesus paid it all. He paid it all, all of it. Okay, so it means restore relationship with the Father. It means freedom from the power of sin, but it also means everlasting life. Everlasting life. John three talks about this having an everlasting life. For God so loved the world. You know the verse. Everlasting means freedom from sin. And you can't have freedom without somebody paying for that sin debt. But it also means hope. Oh my goodness, so we're in a place where we need hope right now. Yeah. But if there is, you know, it's Good Friday because Good Friday means there's hope. There's hope for you, for you and there's hope for me. There's hope because of the cross. The cross gives us hope. And you're like, well, but he's dying. He, he's dead. Yeah. Somebody had to pay that penalty. And on Sunday, we're going to talk about the other side of that hope. You see, the cross gives us hope because it restores the relationship. 
because Jesus paid for our sin debt. On Sunday, Resurrection Day, it becomes a whole much more. We'll talk about that on Sunday. But it shows us a best picture of love we could ever see. The best picture of love is a love that sacrifices, is a love that gives, a love that, that, that literally lay its life down. Jesus said, the one that lays his life down for his friends. And it's just a picture of true love. Want to know what love is? You can go back to that old 80s song. Want to know what love is? Look at the cross. That's what love is. When I look at the cross, I, I see a picture of, uh, of the sinless God-man who did for me what I couldn't do for myself. He paid for my sin. And yet enabled me to be a joint heir, to be able to come into the kingdom. The sin debt has been paid. As Christians, to Christians, there is no greater symbol of love than the cross. Forgiveness and life come from the cross. Without the cross, we would not even know what true love is, what real forgiveness looks like, because that's what the cross did. The cross is like saying, Jesus said, I Forgive you. I, you, you, if you just trust in me, you will have forgiveness for the sin, the debt that you that you owe. I am so thankful for the cross today. I don't know about you, but I hope that you have been reminded of, of the, the power of the cross. It is it's a beautiful picture. And we've seen this cross. And the Bible says that Jesus was crucified for our sins. It was our sin debt that he died for. Past, present, and future. And the cross symbolizes for us the gateway to freedom and life. Freedom from sin and life eternal with them. The cross gives us hope. The cross gives us hope. Man, don't we need some of that today? Yes, we do. And I want you to do something right now. Take a second. Don't know where you're at. If you do this, maybe you can do this later if you're not where you have this. I, paper, pencil. I want you to take a piece of paper, post it notes, something like that. And I want you to write down, I want you to write down some of, some of those sins that Jesus died for on, on that cross. You know what they are. You see, Jesus died on that cross to take away our sin. Every one of us right now that's watching, that's listening, is dealing with something in our life right now. Dealing with some of our sin. Something, I want you to write down something, a sin that gets the best of us more often than not. Write down something that the Hebrews talks about, that sin that so easily besets us. Yeah, that one. Write that one down. You may be the only one that knows about it besides him. I want you to write them down. You go, ahead and, go ahead and do that. I'll give you a second. Write it down. Say, I got a piece of paper right here. I know it's bad handwriting, but you can see my point. My sin. So I want you to take a piece of paper. See this? My sin. Write it down. You don't be able to show this to anybody. It's between you and him. Take it. Okay? And you're like, so after you wrote it down, write it down. And after you wrote it down, I want you to do something with it. What do I want you to do? I want you to tear it up. I want you to tear it up like I am into little bitty pieces, tiny little bitty pieces. Now, why would I do that? Because that's what Jesus did for your sin. I want you to take that. And I want you to thank him for the forgiveness of that sin debt. I want you to take those, those shreds of paper. And I just want you to say, you know what? Your, your sin debt, whatever sin you wrote down, if you've asked him to forgive you, it's gone. And the cross has made, made that happen. The cross made it happen. You see, once you tore this up, once you tore this little bit of pieces, I want you to thank God for what Jesus has done for you. I want you to thank him. He will hear you. He is waiting for you. Okay? The cross means freedom. The cross means freedom from sin and guilt. Whatever you wrote down, he can and will forgive it. And if you wrote down something that you have not asked him for forgiveness, I'm going to tell you right now, the first thing you got to do when you ask him for forgiveness is that you've got to, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to say, God, I need you to forgive me for all my sin. I need you to to uh, to, to Take my sin debt away through what Jesus did on the cross. You can do that. And just like I tore this up, that's exactly what he does. He's like, you know what? It's clean. It's all gone. 
And it's only that, it's only, it only happens through the cross. Okay? The cross, the cross is a game changer. The cross is a game changer. And we celebrate Good Friday because it's so good that our sin debt was paid. We can now have everlasting life, according to John 3 and other passages. We restore relationship, freedom from the power of sin. We can have all heaven our home later uh, in eternity. We can have all that because of the cross. See, the cross made it all happen. The cross enabled us to erase that separation. So today, maybe... You recognize, you know what, look, look, all the stuff that, that you've been forgiven. I want you to take a moment. I want you to thank God for how much he's forgiven you. Because, buddy, he is an amazing God. He has, he's an amazing God. And that cross made it made it all happen. So today, maybe you don't know this forgiveness I'm talking about. Take a moment and give your life to him. Admit to him, you're a sinner. You don't have to write it down like uh, I did if you don't want to, but admit to him, hey, I'm a sinner. I've blown it. I missed the mark. And no, I'm not going to heaven apart from the, what Jesus did on the cross. Acknowledge and believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he did die on that cross. Also acknowledge that he was raised from the dead the third day. We'll talk about that Sunday. And, and ask him to come into your life. Give your life to him. Trust him. You know what he will do? He'll do that. He will come into your life. He will forgive you, wipe the slate clean, and make you a brand new person. And that'll make it a good Friday for you. That'll make it a really good Friday for you. How about them apples? That's some good stuff. What are you going to do with it? God has got something for you. Today, what's he got for you? What are you going to do with it? Father, I'm so grateful for the cross. Father, I know without the cross, there would be no point me being on this computer, being on Facebook Live, talking. Nobody wants to hear me talking. But Father God, I know that the cross is so significant. Father, that there is no salvation apart from the cross. There is no life apart from the cross. There is no restored fellowship with the Father, with, with you, apart from the cross. There is nothing, there is no hope apart from the cross. Father God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the cross. Father, we have been given a great gift of forgiveness of our sin. Through the cross and father i pray if nothing else father we have recognized and have gratitude for what jesus did on that cross we love you and father i pray for every person right now that might be listening that does not know the forgiveness i'm talking about they do not know salvation father god i pray that more before the sun sets father they will give their life to you they will recognize their need for you and father they will surrender everything to you Oh, Father, I just pray that you would minister to the spirits now and help them to understand their great need for the Savior. Once again, Lord, we just thank you so much for who you are. And I ask us all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. So join us again. Uh, Friday, sorry, this is Friday. Man, my dates all get mixed up. Sunday, Easter Sunday. Not ideal for me because I like to be in the pulpit in front of my people. Well, not gonna be, I'm going to be in front of a pulpit, but not for my people, not physically. But Easter Sunday is an amazing day. I'm looking forward to sharing a word from the Lord with you. I hope you'll join us 11 o'clock, Facebook Live on Sunday. If you happen to miss it for whatever reason, we are putting our videos on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, First Baptist Church Harbor Oaks. You can look us up, and we are putting it on there if you happen to miss us. But we encourage you and invite People that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. People that don't know the, the hope that we have within us. Because I plan on sharing the gospel again on Sunday. Because that's the point of Easter. He's alive. So join us Sunday, 11 o'clock, Facebook Live. We'd love to have you.